So since we've already covered the basics of the hemoglobin dissociation curve, let's just talk about playing around with this line and let's talk about left shifting and right shifting the blue line that you see right there. Now you're going to hear that terminology, a left shift and a right shift. Uh, but let's first, let's try to think about uh, some of the things that cause changes in the behavior of hemoglobin. So we already talked about in the previous video how hemoglobin changes its behavior a little bit as a function or as oxygen levels change around it. Well, hemoglobin actually shifts to the left and right depending on some other things that are around it as well, pH, DPG, and temperature. And so if you see a decrease in pH, ask yourself right now, what, what does that mean? And, and we're telling you a decrease in pH at the tissues or in a capillary bed near the tissues. What does that mean? Well, it usually means that you have an increase in a metabolic rate because usually you're going to see a decrease in the pH in tissues with a high metabolic rate. DPG is also something that's produced as an intermediate of glycolysis and represents uh, a increase in the metabolic rate of the tissue. And a high temperature is also associated with an increase in metabolic rate. So these variables are really just telling you one thing, which is that there's an increase in the metabolic rate. So now pause the video in a second, but answer this question. How would you want hemoglobin to behave near or in tissues that have a high metabolic rate? Try to answer that question and pause the video right now. So hopefully you got to the idea when you thought about this that in high metabolic rate, when you have a really highly active tissue, your goal from the point of view of oxygen would be to enhance the delivery of oxygen. Now there are tons of different ways that you do this, but the way that hemoglobin actually behaves is that if it encounters an area where the pH is low, DPG is high, or temperature is high, it is going to right shift its curve. And let's look at what that means. It's gonna now, instead of being the blue line, hemoglobin's gonna shift to the right and become this red line. And let's look at how that changes its behavior. Basically, what that means is that you start to go downhill on this hemoglobin loading curve sooner. And remember, when you're looking at a steep region of a graph, that means that for a very small change in oxygen, you're getting a very, very quick change in the percent saturation, and it's going down. So the steep part of the line means that oxygen is jumping off of that hemoglobin. It really wants to leave. And so a right shift in the curve makes the downhill region happen sooner, meaning that over here on our blue line, it was at about 50 millimeters of mercury, where you started to really flow downhill, where hemoglobin started to kick off oxygen relatively easily. Well, if you right shift the curve, now that downhill segment comes earlier, which means that it takes an even, it, you don't have to drive the oxygen level down quite as low in order to get hemoglobin to give off oxygen. And so really, it's, it's, we don't look at graphs that frequently in our daily life, but that's really what that right shift means. A right shift fixes the wrong. That's kind of how I remember it. The wrong is that, oh man, the pH is getting too low, the temperature is getting too high, uh, DPG is being produced, meaning that our metabolic rate's really high. So if the hemoglobin's in a region where the metabolic rate's too high, you should shift the curve to the right, which makes it easier to release oxygen from the hemoglobin and ensures that you fix all these problems. So again, a right shift fixes a wrong. That's kind of how I, I remember it. But make sure you're, you take a chance to write down this graph on your own because when you're taking exams or trying to remember this information, the graph itself, by drawing each th these three lines on here, can actually really help you recall things. So practice drawing this graph so that when you get an exam, you can draw it right on the, right on the exam and you can remember it really well. Uh, next video, we'll talk about a left shift.